Let's do a video today on milling attachments. I have two milling attachments here at Hills Machine Works, and I don't use them very often because if you have a milling machine like my Series 1 Bridgeport over there, you're probably very rarely, if ever, going to use a milling attachment with a lathe. However, I do like to collect accessories for my lathes, and there have been a few cases where it was quick and easy to slap something in the milling attachment, like I, I was making a T-nut the other day on this one, because I, ha I only have one Bridgeport knee mill, and it was tied up, so I threw this on. I also have, if you've seen some of my videos, I also have a small road shaper back there, you can see, and a Steinle horizontal mill. But uh, is, it does come in handy from time to time, <clears throat> and we're gonna look at that in a, in a moment. But first, I just wanna look at the size comparison. It's pretty neat. This is a Palmgren 250, and this is the Palmgren 400. And the reason why they, I believe why they are uh, called the 250 and the 400 is, this one has a jaw width of about two and a half inches, and this one has a jaw width of four inches. And this is made, the 250 is made for, you know, really small lays, something with like a 10 or 11 inch swing in that range. You could probably use it on even uh, some of the smaller South Bend 9 lays or things like that, or maybe even an Atlas 9. Probably wouldn't go any smaller than that. The Palmgren 400 is built for lays that are in the 14 to 16 inch swing range. And that's the one that I use on my 14 by 40 lathe that you can see in the background there. So um, they're pretty neat. And what they allow you to do is, and what, the reason why I bought it is because you can, you can angle these to make different types of cuts. And they're really good if you just have, every once in a while I have a small shaft come in that just needs a um, key seat put into it or something like that, or just a slot uh, along the width of something, and you can just put it in this really fast, set the lathe to the, uh, you know, either the carriage feed uh, or the cross feed or however you're gonna have it set up, and you can just walk away. And uh, it works pretty good. So, let's take a look. The little palmgren is about six and a half inches tall. The base of it and how it mounts is looking at just over seven inches. The 400 is nine and a half inches tall or so. And the base of that is about 10 inches. And the 400 is actually pretty heavy. It's got some beef to it. Uh, when you're picking it up to install it on the lathe, I mean, it's not as heavy as a Kurt Vice or for a bridge board, but that sucker's got some beef. And it is a lot more rigid than the 250 just because of the mass. But so you take your tool post off and you set this on top of the compound and you use, originally you use what, like the lantern style tool post or the rocker style would go right here and hold it down. Now, because I use quick change tool posts, I have a T-nut and a piece of flat stock on there that holds it down. But obviously that's not, you can only clamp that so tight and it doesn't hold super rigid. So you, you really gotta watch out for chatter, <clears throat> excuse me, or for just the cutting forces to actually grab it and move it. And that does happen. So you have to really be mindful. You learn a lot about machining and principles of machining when you use these because you have to be so sensitive and you gotta know what you're doing or else you'll, you'll end up with a crash. So I wanna, look at some of the differences on these. I'm gonna flip them around so you can see. Okay, the main difference between the two, as far as rigidity goes, is the little palmgren only has one little bolt to hold the vice part of the milling attachment, and the, the 400 has two. And you can see just the beef difference between this one and this one. It's got a lot more weight there. Um, and it makes a huge difference when you're using them. But look at how cool these little milling attachments were. They have, you know, a, a graduated uh, lines here that you can set for an angle. And like I said, if you think about it and use your imagination, you can use this pretty cool in pretty cool ways on the lathe. Um, because you can... Let's go ahead and put these on a machine 
and we'll just take like some really light cuts with it so you can kind of see how they fit on there, uh, what it looks like, and then kind of see it in action. And now this gives you a good idea how the Palmer 250 attaches to the lathe. This is the small lathe, 11 inch swing, and you can see that the 250 goes right on top of the compound there where your tool post would go, and I'm using the rocker style tool post to attach it. And I'm in the middle of a cut. I'm able to feed at a fairly good rate. And I'm just facing off the block there. And what you do is you feed, or I choose to feed, with the compound. And you can do that, or you can just keep locking the carriage and use a dial indicator to measure your carriage travel. But it does work okay. And one thing I've learned from using these and playing around with them a little bit, is you, it really forces you to learn your feeds and speeds, because if you don't have a good feed and speed set up, you'll get that, that milling attachment will really bounce under any kind of uh, bad kind of tool pressure or you know from from an incorrect setup. You got to really watch it. So it does help you to learn how they used to have to do milling back in the old days when these were more common. We are now over to the Logan 6560, and we have the Palmgren 400 in place, just like we did over on the smaller machine. And what we are doing right now is we are milling on this piece of round stock. And you can see where this could actually come in handy for putting a key seat into something. You know, whether you could use a woodruff key cutter and then come over to the side, hang out the round stock, or just cut a slot like this. There are little things here and there that the milling attachment is good for. But if you have a real milling machine, you're probably never going to use it unless your milling machine is tied up and you have to do a quick job. So it's worth keeping it around just for that purpose, I think. They are expensive. You can find deals every once in a while for them used, which is what I did. But I wouldn't go out and spend top dollar for them if you're not going to use them very often. I hope you enjoy seeing the size difference between the Palm Grid 250 and the 400 and getting a look at a little bit of milling with them. Maybe I'll make another video on how to really set these up and use them more effectively, but this just gives you an idea. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please remember to subscribe below and to share these videos with your friends. Till next time.